ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Principal Engineer Pivotal, Jürgen Holler. So, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome from, from my side. I've got the pleasure to uh, spend a few minutes on, um, well, the state of spring in Java, as it grandly says here. We're really in interesting times in uh, the Java world, in the Java ecosystem. Uh, but let's start with uh, uh, something truly great, something that makes me truly happy, um, Java 8's adoption. Uh, this is actually a, a, a survey result from, from about, about a year ago already where Java 8 dominates with a, like, almost uh, a 75% here. We are, in the meantime, certainly beyond this, although I don't have uh, uh, actual numbers from, from this moment. Java 8 is by far uh, the most established Java platform version that we ever had in the history of Java, uh, even a stronger base adoption than Java 6 had uh, for all those years. And this is truly great. It makes me happy as an API designer. It makes me happy as a framework architect. I hope it makes you as happy uh, as application developers and application architects. Who's in love with Java 8 in the meantime? Raise your hand. So it's really great to have Java 8 out there. I'm sure some of you are still looking forward to Java 8. Anybody still looking forward to it? Not quite on Java 8 yet. I hope you'll get there soon. So this is where we are. Um, so what's coming next? Well, there's a somewhat disruptive new Java release cadence coming our way. Java 9 started it uh, in September last year. Uh, we get a half, every half year we get a release now, half year iterations. We've already had Java 10. Uh, and uh, we are just about to approach Java 11 as we speak. So. The visual complexity of this little graphic that I borrowed from our friends at the zoo is really quite telling. This is a somewhat complex model. Uh, it's not just uh, visually complex, it's also somewhat hard, to, somewhat hard to derive practical consequences from it. The most important part are the long lines, right? Java 8, uh, second from the bottom is a long-term support generation. And as uh, the, uh, uh, the years indicate, it's really to be supported until 2023 and even higher in an extended support life. The next long line is 11 as a long-term support release. And then, well, there's a gap, right? Uh, it's Java 17, three years later, um, to be the next long-term support release. And in between, we get half-year Java releases all the time, immediately cutting off end of life when the next half year iteration comes along. There are many consequences from this, some of which are going to be discussed in, in other talks at this conference, not least of it all, Simon Ritter's um, uh, talk about uh, JDK 8, uh, JDK 9, 10, and 11, and beyond. So let me guide you through a few um, concrete notes and consequences on it from, from our perspective. Java 8 as a baseline is going to be with us for the foreseeable future. The entire ecosystem is baselined on Java 8 in the meantime, or at least about to be baselined on Java 8. 6 and 7 are really totally fading out, even in terms of new versions um, from, of popular open source projects. It also has a support commitment until 2023 and higher from uh, um, many stakeholders out there in the industry. So uh, from the perspective of a conservative organization, more uh, uh, long-term planned, stable platform releases underneath the apps. Um, Java 8 is a fine baseline to stay on. That's a fair enough thing to say for a start. Of course, um, there's a lot of goodness in Java 8. There's many things you can do. There's many things you can use. There are going to be many open source releases over the next few years that are still going to be perfectly compatible with Java 8 as a platform. You can consume the upgrades of the frameworks and tools on top of it, staying on a Java 8 baseline if you choose to do so. Now, Java 8, as a uh, Java 11, as a long-term support release, is an immediate alternative to Java 8. Um, let me guide you through uh, where it's at right now. Java 11 comes with a support commitment from several vendors, 
until 2023 and plus as well. It actually has the same uh, support time frame, almost the same support time frame as Java 8, J because of Java 8's really extended support life. So um, commercial support is, of course, available from the usual suspects, Oracle, Azul, Reddit, IBM, SAP, possibly others. There is an initiative called Adopt Open JDK, which has been set up around this new release cadence, where freely available community builds are to be produced from the Open JDK um, public branches, the public maintenance branches, for the long-term support releases. Um, this has yet to fully materialize, because of course, at the moment, we can still consume the public updates as we always did as Oracle JDKs. Um, but as of January next year, March next year, um, uh, we are not going to get public updates, neither for Java 8 nor for Java 11, uh, from the Oracle JDK line anymore. Open JDK is going to be our source of JDK releases of JDK binaries going forward. Adopt Open JDK is the build farm and the download site for uh, immediately consumable binaries. Um, the actual patches, the actual work done on the maintenance branches in the OpenJDK project is going to come from engineers uh, from Azul, from Red Hat, from, uh, from others for sure. Adopt OpenJDK is then going to produce the builds. Now, this provides an immediate alternative. We've got Java 8 in a long-term support fashion, actually a support commitment from the same vendors for the same time frame, even a commitment from Adopt OpenJDK to produce freely available OpenJDK 8 maintenance builds until 2022, 2023. So uh, Java 8 and 11 basically provide the same, the same support guarantees. Um, staying on Java 8 is one option. Upgrading to Java 11 is the other, where you can consume a lot of innovation that made it into Java 9, 10, and 11, uh, which I'm not going into uh, here this morning. But uh, Simon is certainly going into it in his session. I'm, covering a little bit of it in my own session this afternoon. Um, so the choice is yours. You can make it based on the technological advance having uh, been made towards Java 8. Uh, it's not a decision you have to make based on other constraints. Now, what's uh, up with Java 11 specifically? It's actually to be released today. Um, so we are very timely in this discussion. It's to be released this afternoon. Um, if everything goes right, we can download it, at least tonight, right? So how great is that, right? We, we finally have a new long-term support release in our hands, hopefully, <laughs> tonight. So that, that's great for a start. And it's really, the time is now for you to make up your mind on the Java 8 versus 11. Uh, question for your production systems going forward and for your, for your development efforts going forward. Let's look beyond it, though. Um, just a quick glance towards the next long-term support release. Um, nothing's concrete yet. We don't even know which uh, features are going to make it into Java 12. Um, but one thing we do know, Java 17 is going to drop September 2021, because it's a very predictable model every three years. There are going to be, every three years, a long-term support release. Um, there are going to be five, a grand total of five Java generations in between, from Java 12 to 16. Of course, you could possibly upgrade to those every half year. You're even going to get the immediate, su uh, the immediate support for each of those generations from Oracle while they're working on it still. They are not long-term support releases, though. So. Uh, um, once you commit yourself to Java 12, you're really committing yourself to 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 as well at the same time. Um, and only then you'll reach a new long-term support branch in the form of Java 17. Frankly, I expect there to be a limited audience for non-long-term support releases. Um, I'd, be, I'd be a happy person if there's a strong interest in Java 12 uh, and, and Co as well. But uh, practically speaking, for production environments, um, I expect most people to stay on Java 11 at best, to on 8 or 11, and then wait for 17 as their next long-term support release. But by all means, give it a chance, upgrade, maybe just locally upgrade some applications to Java 12, to Java 13. Do a smoke test, see what happens, see whether there are any deprecations that you can prepare yourself for, um, even if you only really intend to upgrade to Java 17 eventually. 
All right. Well, how are we dealing with this from a Spring Framework perspective? Um, this is roughly where, where we are right now in our planning. Uh, we have an active Spring Framework 4.3 branch. Uh, it's already out for a while. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's going to enjoy a support life until June 2020, uh, according to our current planning. It supports Java 6 and 7, which is mostly a thing of the past. Uh, and it runs perfectly fine on Java 8. It was the central theme of the 4.x line after all. It is not going to get officially supported on anything higher than 8. So if you're on Spring Framework 4.3, you're on Java 8, and you're on your own if you upgrade to, uh, to Java 9 or higher. In Spring Framework 5.0, we had um, initial support for Java 9. It was a strong theme at the time. We sneaked in support for Java 10 into the Spring Framework 5.0x line. And Spring Framework 5.0x is still to be supported for about half a year from now. Um, al along the lifetime of the Spring Boot to the Do generation. Spring Framework 5.1 um, actually released late last week. I should actually have a, a little bit of a note on that as well. It already dropped on Friday. Uh, the Spring Boot uh, 2.1 and 4 releases picking it up this week. So Spring Framework 5.1, hot from the oven, um, covers Java 11. And this is significant. Uh, there has been quite a bit of technical work towards Java 11 compatibility. The, uh, if you intend to upgrade to Java 11, please upgrade to Spring Framework 5.1 along the lines for a warning-free development and deployment experience on Java 11. Uh, we're not officially supporting any older Spring Framework version on Java 11 or higher. So that's Spring Framework 5.1, the just started uh, branch that you'll be able to consume in the form of Spring Boot 2.1 very soon in GA form. Next up is Spring Framework 5.2, a nine-month iteration according to the current plan. And uh, we intend to pick up Java 12 there. So this is indicative for, for how we are handling it. Uh, Java 8 and 11 as the long-term support branches officially supported from our end. Best effort support for the releases in between. If you're a 9 or 10, if you intend to upgrade to 12 next year, uh, we are very willing to work with you, to help you to accept bug reports, to do anything we can for a smooth experience, but they are not officially production supported. Um, the long-term support releases are what we are primarily focusing on. Um, Java 12 and higher will be best effort from our side. All right, so Spring Framework 5.1 is primarily supported on Java 8 and 11. Um, this is also the title of my talk this afternoon. The, uh, um, best effort support is currently for 9 and 10. Uh, we might sneak it into the 5.1x line for, for 12, but uh, 5.2 is certainly going to pick it up. There's a lot of work involved. Just imagine, from a technical perspective, every new Java generation comes with a new bytecode level. So we need an updated ASM parser for the bytecode level. Um, there are API deprecations and replacements. Um, potentially in every single release, and they have been proving it from 9 to 10 to 11 that they're actually doing this. Uh, so there is significant work. But there's also a promise from our side that we are up to uh, always being compatible with uh, the latest, that's the best effort notion, um, even for the in-between releases. There's just a little bit of a side note, right? There's actually a lot of goodness in Spring from 5.1, aside from the Java 11 compatibility story. Uh, we spent uh, lots of fine-tuning time on uh, the functional bean definition APIs, both for the Java side and for the uh, Kotlin side. We have a new retrieval API in a Java util collection stream style um, called bean providers and uh, uh, supporting a, a bean stream retrieval model. Um, quite nice in terms of the, uh, the uh, development experience, in particular in the functional world, also if you use it within the annotation-based model. And last but not least here, we spent considerable effort on internal optimizations, in particular fine-tuning our use of reflection and uh, aggressively caching uh, internal metadata in order to improve, um, well, startup times in particular, and GC pressure. Um, so the, there's a lot of fine-tuning in Spring Framework 5.1 that on its own uh, is worth upgrading to. So the, the, uh, the, uh, this little graphic that I got from uh, Dave Sire 
is uh, quite indicative of what we're doing here. If we are shrinking the heap size to, to like just about 10 megabytes, you, can, you are still able to run a basic Spring Boot 2.1 application just fine, even in such a constrained environment. The cutoff where you got uh, basically an irresponsible startup time uh, was significantly before in Spring Boot 2.0. And uh, the work that we did allows you to run such a minimal sample in uh, a much more highly constrained environment than before. Um, the, uh, that's the, the blue and the red line. The, uh, the uh, yellow line is a functional version, a functional Spring Boot 2.1 application, um, which uh, actually doesn't behave as irresponsibly, even under extreme conditions. Um, this is also a part of this work. Dave Sire will cover this uh, whole, uh, this, this entire effort in a presentation called uh, How Fast is, uh, is Spring, um, or the, the like. Uh, later in this conference. All right, so lo lots of effort that went into this. Uh, I should mention quickly that we are also spending time on Graal compatibility, the Graal VM, uh, a really interesting research effort uh, from Oracle's side that is, um, um, well, it does many things. Um, it, uh, it delivers a polyglot experience on the JVM, but it in particular comes with Substrate VM and the native image model where we, through pre-compilation, through ahead of time compilation, um, we can deliver a, a binary, a, a, a deployment unit that just starts up so much faster than a traditional JVM. It comes with certain limitations in what you can do in such, a in, in such an environment. And we've already prepared Spring Framework 5.1 for many of the constraints as they are understood right now. Uh, this is an ongoing effort. So we are, we are on our mission to deliver a full Graal story, a full Graal compatibility story towards Spring Framework 5.2. Graal VM itself is not final yet. So um, it's an ongoing effort on both sides, and it's a collaboration with uh, the Graal VM team, really. Now, um, a word on Kotlin. Um, I've only really name-dropped Kotlin before in the functional bin definition model. Um, we always spend uh, a lot of effort in trying to understand the latest and greatest in the Kotlin world and to make it a part of the Spring Framework programming model. Uh, there's already a lot of goodness in Spring Framework 5.0 and 5.1 in the Kotlin space, but it's all still on Kotlin 1.2, the current um, production generation of Kotlin. Kotlin 1.3 is immediately upcoming. Um, it's, it's on our doorstep, and uh, we'll certainly pick up some goodness from Kotlin 1.3 in our 5.2 line early next year. All right, so I'll uh, leave you with just uh, those two references, Simon Ritter's talk about uh, JDK 9.10, um, every, every little feature in there, but in particular also the implications of uh, the new release model, and my own Spring Framework 5.1 on JDK 8 and 11 talk. It's primarily a Spring Framework 5.1 talk, uh, but I'll, I'll also be discussing some of the uh, challenges on Java, on Java 11, on JDK 11, some upgrade considerations, a little discussion of the module system, uh, so for a, a, a little bit of a technical deep dive on some of the things I've touched upon here. So uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, I'll quickly call Josh up to the stage. Josh, are you here? Oh. So thanks for your attention so far. It's selfie time now. Oh, hi. So, man, hey. Oh, buddy. Wow, thanks for that. Nice so, job. Great talk. Yeah. Where's your, where, where's okay. your so let's, let's do this. Uh, you ready? Steady. All right. One, two, three, here we go. Open source. Ooh. Uh oh, yeah. All right. All right, great job. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks. Right. Bye bye. Cheers. All right, a big hand for Jurgen Holler. Amazing.